Hello again and welcome back to another episode of Home Brewers Alley. Today we're doing a brew session at the Crosshatch Home Brewery and uh, we'll be doing an IPA today. Now I know we've done an IPA on previous episodes, uh, however we've changed the recipe. So this is a new IPA recipe that we'll be making. We're doing a 10 gallon batch and I'm also going to try to cover a couple of the specifics um, that were brought up in questions on uh, YouTube and on Facebook uh, on a couple of small items that we may not have covered before. So let's take a look at our recipe real quick. So for our specialty grains of the recipe, we have two row caramel malt 40L, uh, two pounds of that, one pound of carob pills, one pound of white wheat, and that will do it for our specialty grains. Uh, and then we will of course be using 12 pounds of dry light extract. For our hop charges, we'll be bittering with a combination of one and a half ounces of magnum pellets and a half ounce of Chinook pellets. And then for flavoring and aroma hops, we're doing a combination of Chinook and Amarillo. Uh, we will also be dry hopping with three ounces of, Amarillo, of the Amarillo hops when we're in secondary. And um, now with the yeast, uh, we'll be using two yeast today. Uh, in my five gallon batch, uh, I'll be using a California Ale yeast from White Labs, and then Jay will be bringing a yeast that he will be putting in uh, his five gallons. Um, so that's about it for the recipe. Uh, it's a little chilly outside. Uh, Easter weekend's coming up, um, and spring hasn't quite got here, uh, but hopefully uh, we will have fine enough weather for brewing. Actually, I guess it's always fine weather for brewing. So, let's go get started. We're going to add five gallons of water to the pot for our specialty grains for the steeping. It's a little bit colder out today and kind of windy, so I'm going to bring the temperature up to 156 degrees, which is a little bit higher than what we normally do. Uh, and then we will steep our grains, which is the white wheat, the carob hills, and the crystal 40L. Steep that for about a half hour, and then we'll remove the grain bag and sparge, and bring it all the way up to boiling temperature, at which point we will add the uh, extract and our first hop charge. So let's get started. All right, so we brought our water temperature up, came up to uh, a little hot. It came up to 164 degrees. And so to bring the temperature down, add about another half gallon of water, stir it up a little bit. We're now down to about 156, 158, somewhere in there. So we're gonna add our specialty grains to start steeping. And they will be in there for a half hour before we take them out the sparge. <clears throat> so, because of the amount of grains that we got here, got two grain bags. One has the carapils and the white wheat, and this is our Crystal 40L. And we're just going to drop those down in there. And that's about it. Put the lid back on, and like I said, they will sit for about 30 minutes or so, and then we'll be good to go. So our grains have been steeping for about a half hour. Actually, we went a little bit longer than a half hour. We did about 45 minutes. Uh, but it is now ready to take out, and we're going to start the sparge. So we've got our grain bags here. Take one. Grain for a second. Normally I actually put this all in one grain bag, but because we had three pounds of grain, I split it up into two. Alright, so there we go. Now as you see here, I'm kind of pressing down on the grain bags. We want to make sure that we extract all that multi-grainy goodness. So now some brewers will tell you that you shouldn't squeeze your grains. Um, I am a proponent actually of squeezing the grains to an extent. I mean you don't want to go crazy with it, but you definitely want to extract any of the uh, wart that has soaked up in there. As you can see I'm kind of just pressing down on the uh, grain here to get all the liquid out, but I'm not going crazy with it. That's not going to extract too many tannins. Uh, and it's not going to affect the flavor of your beer. So now we're going to start the sparge. 
Now for sparge and the grains, as you've seen on previous episodes, I actually take the wort that we've been steeping and take it out of here and then pour it back over the grain bags. Uh, some of the viewers have brought up in the past that they don't want to waste any of the wort to do it the way that they actually will take hot water and pour it over. I think really it's a personal preference. I've never had any issue with taking wort and doing it with the sparge. Um, so it's really either way. So you see we got some good colors out of the grains there. So for sparge and the grains, we're just basically pouring this over, this wart over the bags. And this helps to extract more of your sugars and malts. So we're just finishing up sparging the grains here and we're going to add another five gallons of water at which point we will bring that up to boiling point and then we will add the extract and then we will add our first hop charge for our 60 minute boil. All right so we added our uh, another five and a half gallons of water so we're up at about 11 gallons of uh, total wort that's going on with the specialty grains that have been steeping in there and our temperature now is up probably close to 190 degrees. We're getting close to boiling. And so we are now going to be adding our light extract malt. And we're adding 12 pounds for this particular recipe for 10 gallons. And we'll be adding three pound bags at a time. And so I'm just gonna pour this in here. And then I'll stir it in to get it good and incorporated so we don't have any clumps going on. You can see that there. We have four three pound bags that we'll be adding for the total of 12 for you mathematicians. And uh, once we get that all incorporated, we'll let the heat keep kicking on this. <clears throat> bring it up to a boil and once we get a rolling boil we'll be adding our first hop charge for the uh, for the bittering hop okay so we're getting ready to add our first hop charge for the bittering hops we're doing one and a half ounces of magnum and a half ounce of chinook as you can see we got those in there get rid of the bags we got a rolling boil going on here all of our malt extracts have been added. Specialty grains are in there. So here we go. I want to bring up real quick while we're doing the boil. Uh, if you notice that I have the lid here three quarters of the way off uh, to let some of the steam and whatnot come off. Uh, a couple of you have brought up in past videos on the comments on YouTube about me having the lid all the way on and were concerned about uh, DMS. DMS is, I can't pronounce the whole thing, uh, but it's something sulfides, dimethyl sulfide, I believe, uh, which can cause some off flavors in beer. Uh, it's more prevalent when you're doing a lager, we're doing an ale. Uh, it's also more prevalent in uh, all grain brewing styles versus an extract brewing. It's something that you don't have to worry about as much with extract. However, with keeping the lid partially off and letting some of this heat escape, you're preventing the any DMS off flavors, off flavors that might come in. In addition, you have a better control over your overall boil so you don't get a boil over. All right, so we're getting ready to add our second hop charge, uh, which is one ounce of Amarillo and one ounce of Chinook. Our boil has been gone for 45 minutes, so we're at the last 15 minutes of the boil, and this is our flavoring hops. Alright, so we just cut the flame, and we're doing our final hop charge for the aroma hops. And we're doing one ounce of Amarillo. Drop those in there. And 
we're actually going to use an ounce and a half of Chinook. We're going to use that other half ounce that we didn't use in the initial bittering. And then another ounce of Chinook. We'll just let that sit for a couple minutes and then we're going to take this out and put it in our two primary fermentation buckets. Uh, split it up the 10 gallons, we'll have 5 gallons per bucket and uh, then we'll add the yeast once we get the temperature cooled down to 70 degrees and probably let it primary for about two weeks. Uh, dry hop with Amarillo. Uh, the exact amount of Amarillo, not quite sure yet, i got to do a little bit of research since normally I've dry hopped in the past with whole leaf hops. This time we're using pellets and we might we might use less than what we normally do in the past. Uh, so somewhere between one and three ounces, but we'll catch that on a future episode. We have the hot wort coming out into the primary fermentation bucket. And as you see, we have the strainer on there to catch any of the uh, hop trub that's floating around there in the uh, boil kettle. And I will strain it out so that we can uh, do the primary fermentation. All right, so right now we are using the wort chiller to cool down our wort to 70 degrees so we can pitch the yeast. As you can see, uh, this plunging action here helps to aerate the wort so that your yeast gets uh, into action faster. And it also helps to cool down the beer or the wort faster. All right, so we're taking our hydrometer reading to get our original gravity. All right, so we're getting ready to pitch the yeast. Our temperature was about 72, 73 degrees, and our original gravity was 1.062, 1.063. So we're gonna pitch the yeast. I am using California uh, 5 ale yeast, and in this one, we'll be using the California, just the general California yeast, which is the WLP001, and the one that I'm using in mine is the WLP051. So, Pitch away. That's it. Gonna ferment for about two weeks uh, before we add the dry hops. We'll be good to go. Cheers. So we got another brew day on the books. Uh, everything turned out as expected uh, with our target gravity. Uh, in that 1.062 to 1.063 range, our target was 1.062, so we were right on. And so we'll see how far that gravity drops uh, as the fermentation progresses and uh, see if we hit our target uh, ending gravity, which um, I can't quite remember uh, what it's supposed to be able to double check the recipe. Uh, but if everything turns out as planned, uh, we should end up with a ABV that's 6.5%. Uh, so we'll check back in a couple weeks. We're going to be kegging both these beers, and I believe we're also going to be doing some forced carbonation for the kegs. Uh, so we will film that episode and show you how to do some forced uh, carbonation. So in the meantime, remember, relax, don't worry, and have a homebrew. And until next time on Homebrewers Alley, cheers. <laughs>